All right, everybody. Welcome back to another Ask a Div Quick Play Challenge. My name is Kevin. Today's challenge is all about motion matching and additional movement sets. So with our recent motion matching release, we've been getting a lot of questions about what about crouches, what about wall climbs, and I'm generally like, oh, you should just be able to just throw it in, right? No problem. It should be pretty straightforward. But is it? And so I figured we would do a quick challenge. Uh, as a quick reminder, these are unrehearsed, unscripted, uh, full-on fumbling forwards uh, as best as possible. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to add crouch to our motion matching tutorial that we did just recently. So that's the goal. My name's Kevin. Uh, support the channel. Uh, lots of ways to do it. Patreon, all the links and stuff are down below. Tips, uh, spreading the word is awesome. Let's not belabor this and let's just get going. So. Here we are, Unreal Engine. We have, this is our motion matching tutorial. It is in, it should be in the state we were in when we finished our tutorial last time. So let's just take a quick look at our um, blueprint for our animations. Now, what we want to do is we want, so currently we are set on the chooser method. Now, in my mind, I actually think the chooser is going to be the easiest one. But before we can even start to use the chooser, we do need to set up our character for crouching because currently we cannot crouch. If we press play, we have no way to activate crouch. So we do need to do that. So let's uh, do that first. So in our blueprints for third person, uh, what we want to do, uh, we need a input action actually. So we're going to put in input action here for crouching, much like jump. So if we go to input actions and we take jump, I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to call this one crouch. Crouch. And I want to change, I want to make one change to this, which is this by default has both pressed and released. I don't want that. I'm just going to do pressed. And then we can go back, let's save that. Let's go back to our character. Let's implement crouch. Input action crouch, here we go. Okay, and all we want to do is when we crouch is we want to basically, when we trigger crouch, we want to basically toggle it. So uh, the way we do that is I believe we can get that from our character movement because we do not have it defined here already. And let's see what we have. Crouch is crouching. That will totally work for us. So if we're crouching, we are going to set it to not crouching. So. And we're also going to crouch or uncrouch. Now, also interestingly enough on our movement set, if we type in crouch, because uh, the movement component comes with this, let's see here, character, move, ah, no, no, it's actually not the movement set. It's actually just part of the character, crouch. So you'll notice under character, we can crouch, crouch, and uncrouch. Ooh, can crouch. That's something that we wanna keep in the back of our minds. And then we also need uncrouch as part of our toggle. All right, now, if we are crouching, let's, so we're going to need a Boolean in here. If we are crouching, we are going to uncrouch when we press the button. And if we're not crouching, we're going to crouch. And that should do it that should basically set it up for us to be able to crouch. Now, the problem is there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of things here. First, let's, um, let's just put a quick print string in here so we know. So this is going to be uh, stop crouch. And then uh, we're going fast here, so we're not worried about typos, and we're going to call this one crouch. Okay, so now when we do that, we have our input action, it's set up to toggle. We think, I think that's everything we need. Uh, oh yeah, we didn't actually connect it to our input binding. So over here in our input defaults, we do need to add the crouch. Here it is, I'm going to put this on the control key, the left control key, let's save that and play. So now when we press control, you can see it says crouch. When we press control again, it still says crouch. Interestingly enough, I would expect it to uncrouch. Oh, I think I know what it is. So here's the problem. Remember what I was saying when I noticed that there's this is crouching and can crouch? I think I vaguely remember on our movement component, we do need 
Yes. Okay, this, it's always a checkbox. It's always a checkbox. Okay, so we do need to check this can crouch. This character can crouch. So let's go ahead and now that we can crouch, so we're crouching and we stop crouching. Crouching, stop crouching. Okay, so it's working. However, we're not getting any of our animations. That's because we haven't defined them yet. And this is where the chooser and um, this is where the chooser and the motion matching stuff comes in, the ma motion matching database comes in. So let's take a look at, in our tutorial folder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new batch. Let's call this one PSD Manny Crouch. So we need a new pose database set. If you, if you didn't follow our motion matching tutorial, this is going to feel like we're uh, uh, it's going to feel like we skipped a whole lot of steps. So I'll, I'll put a link in here, but go check out that tutorial so that you're up to speed because we're starting from there. So let's do basically, we don't even have any crouches in here that I see. So we need to add them. God, I love clicking that button. All right, let's get all of our crouches from our characters heroes folder down here. I'm going to get MM and crouch. So let's just grab them all for now. And just drop them in and interestingly enough these do not have the motion on so we will go ahead and let's go find these real quick double click browse to crouch entry exit property make matrix I and mean, we need to add, I'm just going to edit these using the property matrix so we can do it all at once, and we're going to do uh, root. Enable root motion on these. Okay, and let's just save them and go. All right, so now when we go back to our, our crouch database, we should have what we need. Okay, so we have what we need. Now, one question that you might have is, or at least I do, is my suspicion is this won't work if we just drop all of our crouches inside of our pose search database and try working because there's no way for it to know the difference between moving forward crouching versus moving forward standing up. And we could test that and maybe we'll do that. Do we, can we do that fast? Actually, we can do that really fast. Let's do that really fast. Let's go ahead and go to our all database. And what we can do is we can just drop in the crouches just like we did before. And we can actually test this right now. So. We'll go ahead and do that. Let's get all of these. And then let's do a search on crouch and let's make this a reasonable test. So let's get rid of, we don't need the turns because we're not doing anything for the turns. Walks are all good. Idles, exit entries, let's just leave that. And let's just see what this looks like when we connect it up. So we're doing the all version of it. So when we walk forward, characters running and walking forward, uh, oh, there's a little bit of a crouch there. Now, if we crouch, actually, that's pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with that. Like, that's the kitchen sink version. Now, technically, I'm no longer crouched here, so it is crouching sometimes. It's getting a little bit confused. So this is why I, I want to be able to control it. Now, we might be able to do something like add in another trajectory node in our trajectory like our tracking node like right now we have our feet maybe we could add in our chest or whatever but anyways surprisingly enough that worked pretty well but let's go back to the chooser method and what we're going to do is we're going to update our chooser table so if you recall we have our chooser table what we want to add in here is we want to add in another asset row and this one is going to be our crouch table so manny crouch and I do want to make a couple changes in Manny Crouch, just like we did before. We don't need the turns for now. And we keep all the walks, let's keep all the entries, let's just keep it straight, straight forward. Let's save that. Let's go back to our chooser table. Now, in order to crouch, this can be any, should move could be any, but we do need another column. And the column we need is a crouch column from our motion match database, and I don't, know that we have we do not have a boolean variable yet so we do need to add a boolean variable here to track our crouch state so what i'm going to do is let's add a pen let's move this down 
let's get our movement component and rather than is falling let's get is crouching and what we'll do is we'll promote this to a variable and this is going to be boolean is crouching and we will set that to whatever the state we're in so now we have a variable in our animation blueprint that also keeps track of this so that we can use that in our chooser table. So in our chooser table, we need to add a column. It's a Boolean column and we need to add a binding and the binding in this case is crouching. So now we can explicitly separate this. So we don't, we want crouch to be false when Manny's idle and false when Annie's running and true when Manny is um, crouching. So basically the only time crouch should happen is when should move is anything and crouching is true and we're not going to get any of these others in the other states. So that actually should do it. And that's why I mentioned that I think this is going to be the easiest one. So let's just see how that looks. Okay, so our character runs. Everything is as it was before. That's cool. We can do all this stuff. I don't see any weird things going on with our crouch. Now, if we crouch, cool, character's down. We're moving. We're getting all of our post search database stuff just like I would expect. That's cool. And then we uncrouch. And we don't have any of, we're not, we're helping it. We're helping the motion matching system. It doesn't, it doesn't get confused as easy. And just like that, y'all, crouch is there it's pretty cool and we're also we're also even getting the idols and everything that we need pretty well actually um, we do still have a little bit going on with our, our foot stuff interestingly enough this actually if you notice this actually is stopping a lot better than our than our running and I'm almost wondering if uh, it's a simple thing of putting our feet our stops inside of our run might do it. That is something that we would have to troubleshoot maybe with the runtime debugger and I or the reroll uh, the rewind debugger. I, we can do a separate video on that. Okay, so that's two different methods uh, and why we wanted to split that. That was the database. Uh, that was the chooser thing. So that was pretty. That was pretty straightforward. All we did was add the variables we needed to the chooser table, and it was kind of as straightforward as I thought it was going to be. Now this one I think is going to be a little trickier. So that when I say trickier, what I'm specifically talking about is in our motion matching one. If we go to method two, where we were using this mo uh, motion match locomotion, this one's going to be trickier simply because we have to manage the state machine. So there's probably a good way to set this up, but just for the purposes of our speed run, We'll go with crouch. Okay, and basically we have crouch and what I want to do is inside crouch, I'm basically going to, I'm going to copy this. But I'm going to copy it inside crouch. Okay, so inside crouch, we're going to fill in our crouch database here. Let's compile and save that. And then we just need to be able to get to crouch. So to get to crouch, I think I'm going to use an alias because we can get to crouch from any of these basically either idle stop or run and just in case you had a bunch of them so let's add a state alias let's say to crouch okay and to crouch the way we get here is if crouching is true pretty straightforward okay and then who can come into crouch? Well, we can get there from idle stop and we can get there from run. So we can go from run or stop. That seems right. And then we need a way to get out of crouch. So to get out of crouch, we basically want to update our idle. So this is should not move. That's to idle. Okay. But we also need to add an additional condition in here now, I think because we don't want it to come out when it stops because of in, in the crouch state. So let's add, we also want this to be not crouching. Not crouching. The new uh, stuff in 5.4, the little helper stuff is very, very aggressive. Okay. 
So now we can transition to idle whenever we're not moving and we're not crouching. We can condition, we can transition to crouch whenever we are crouching. That's true. Now there's one more. If we're crouching, moving, and we stand up, we should probably add in a two run as well. So let's 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 add it. No. Yeah, this is going to be an alias to run. And this alias you can get there from crouch. I think. Oh, we want to make sure our two idle we can get there from crouch as well. So two run. Let's go two run. And the condition for this. I kind of don't like this. I could just drag off the crouch straight to the run. All right, we'll 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 keep this. Okay. The condition for this is because we're only using it for the crouch. It's the same thing as me dragging the pen. Don't get lost with that. I just want to take this and we'll go with a not. So we're not crouching. And also should move. Should move is true. So we need both of these. And should move. Okay, so there's a lot more going on logic-wise with this method. So let's see let's see if this is going to work. So we should be able to get to crouch and we should be able to get out of crouch. And idle stop to run should just be normal and run to idle should be normal. I think that should do it. Let's see. Compile and save. Uh, let's double check our anim graph. We are using the motion match locomotion. Let's see. We'll know because when we walk, uh, especially left to right, character stops on a dime, which is good. Okay, so it looks like we haven't broken our normal uh, walk run stuff, which is good. Now we just need to test our crouch by pressing the control key. Okay. Looks good. It looks pretty good. Okay, so now here's the thing. When we're stopped, if I press control, does, do they come out of it? Yes, they do. That's pretty good. Now if I'm crouching and I'm moving and I press control, do they stand up? They do. Okay, we did it. That's it. So like I said, super fast. Um, that's the whole point of these quick play challenges, not to belabor something, just to take a quick little challenge. Can we actually do it very quickly? Or not, not even necessarily quickly. It's like, can we stumble through it uh, and figure it out together? But I thought that this was very... Uh, timely based on the motion matching video and everybody's questions about different movement types and stuff but you can basically see all you need to do is you need to set up a state that you can use and you can choose how you use that state are you going to use it with the chooser and, and create basically your own individual states or are you going to use it with a more traditional state machine overall point is make sure you check the box that the character can crouch uh, create your state variable and then make sure you balance it out correctly and at some point in the future we will do a video on the uh, animation rewind debugger, which is actually really cool and wild to look at to see if we can figure out what's going on with our chooser feet placement stuff. So as always, thanks for checking out the video. Thanks for being the best part of this whole thing, which is the community. Appreciate everybody's support. We will see you on the next one. Take it easy.